I'm here with Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm so happy. I'm talking. This is Lindsay Salatka, and this is her book, Fish Heads and Duck Skin, which she sent me. It's very smooth. I like it a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, it is a fantastic read. Um, you're going to want to read this after you hear us talk today, um, especially with the, the chapter that I chose, I think is very provocative, um, yeah. is chapter 28 of this book. And you'll, you'll hear me read this, but um, this is based on a true incident. This is a novel that Lindsay wrote in the first person. So it actually reads as though it's memoir but it is a novel, but there is some truth to her experience in this particular chapter. I'm so glad I chose this chapter because yeah. it has real life experience. So can you tell us about that? Yes, so um, so it's just interesting. Um, I think, you know, washing clothes and we take so much for granted here. Um, and with, our lives are very easy. I, and I'm saying our, and I'm generalizing, and that's not, I don't mean to do that, but I'm saying there, there are a lot of things about our lives here that are just typically easier than they are in other places. Um, like I just got off a plane from Europe and, and, um, you know, they're like the, it's just different washing your clothes. It's like, do I have to wash this? Cause it's going <laughs> to take a long time, you know? Yeah. So, you just think about it differently. I feel like my kids just put stuff in the wash just because they've looked at it like, oh, that's dirty, you know? So, right. but so just another, it's just a different way of thinking of things and, and experiencing things like laundry. And so, um, so anyway, so uh, um, our, our washing machine broke um, and there's no dryer. So, um, so, you know, I'm so sorry, Lindsay, okay. I, I didn't set up where you were in this. Oh yeah. So, okay. Sorry. So you had traveled to, to China to live yes. and you were, you were in Shanghai. We lived in Shanghai. Yeah. yeah. So you were in Shanghai, mm -hmm. you had an interpreter or a realtor rather who had helped you um, procure the place where you were staying. It was kind of then your 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 advocate and translator after that right yeah well actually in real life it was my husband's secretary but okay. i just didn't bring her in because it was would have just been too many characters sure and, sure um, yeah so um but but she basically did serve the same role so um, okay so, so yeah so continue on yeah okay so we're living in shanghai my wa our washing machine broke we didn't have you know there there are no dryers so so you just line, you just line dry everything, uh, which can be hard because the weather's not always, you know, agreeable. So then, yeah. <laughs> so you might not get your clothes back for a bit. Um, so anyway, so our washing machine broke. So I didn't know what to do, um, where to go, didn't speak Mandarin. Um, so somebody had suggested to go back to, or to go to this um, large chain called Carrefour, which is basically very similar to Walmart in that it carries everything. It's, um, it's a huge, huge thing, a huge chain all mm -hmm. over the world. And so I went to Walt to Carrefour and they have a huge appliance section. And I found one that I thought was, you know, looked good, um, but it didn't work. So they delivered it, it didn't work. And then I thought, okay, well, what am I gonna do? I mean, it was very inexpensive. Right. Relatively speaking for what we would pay. I mean, I. I think I put it in the book. It was like $90. 90, yeah, $90. $90 yeah. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So it was a $90 washing machine. It broke. And my husband's like, well, you know, just chalk that up to like learning and put it on the side of the road. And so but I'm like, well, I, I got to try to return it. So I go back to car for it. I'm like, look, I don't, I obviously don't have it with me. I had to take a taxi to get here. I have this washing machine that I bought here yesterday. It does not work. Or maybe it was a few days later, but, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, it doesn't work. Is there anything you can do? And they said, you know, after finding people that would speak, that could speak English, that had the authority to make decisions, which was a long process, you know, they said, yes, um, we can take it back. And so, but it was, a, it was just a very long exchange to, as to how that was going to work and, you know, and how I was going to get my money back. So I had to pay for the new washing machine. Um, but they weren't going to give me my refund on the other one until they picked it up. And so they said, well, I said, well, how's this going to all happen? They said, well, the driver will give you the money. And so I said, okay, can you just put that in writing? So yeah. everybody's on the same page. Cause I think we're going to be talking to a lot of different people here. So just, you know, do me a favor. Please put it yeah. in writing. So they put it in writing, but they put it in, in Mandarin 
Chinese characters. So I was like, hmm, I don't know what that says. <laughs> I'm just going to take your word for it that it says yeah. what I just asked you to put. And, you know, please put your phone number so we can like, you know, fix things if it, if it all blows apart, which of course it did. So then the delivery man comes to the apartment with the washing machine, with the new washing machine, and he, you know, puts it in and then puts the other washing machine on his little dolly. And he, but he, I, I said, okay, um, now I need my refund. And he said, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no refund. And um, so anyway, back and forth, back and forth, I call um, my, my husband's secretary in the book. It's, it's my, re, it's the realtor. Right. She's talking to, I'm passing the phone back and forth to the delivery guy. <laughs> And then we're calling car for, and we just have all these people circling around and I'm just getting madder and madder. <laughs> and it, this isn't in the book, but in real life I was pregnant. And so I was just like really hot and uncomfortable and grumpy. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so anyway, passing the phone around and around and around and, um, and, and he just gets frustrated the the delivery driver. And he's like, I'm not dealing with this. I mean, he doesn't in his own, you know, yeah. I can just tell that he's just furious yeah. and frustrated. He he's the thing and he's like, I'm out of here. And I'm like, no, you're not, you know, like, I was just like, wait a second. So I had to find a way to keep him there so, so we could figure out what to do with this refund. And so I, I grabbed his shoes from the floor. It was like the only thing I, think I could think of, like the last minute, I, you know, everybody in, in Asia, they put their shoes by the floor, but right by, right by the door. Um, so I grabbed his shoes and I threw them in my bathroom and I locked the bathroom door and I just stood there like holding the key, like, what are you going to do now? <laughs> you can't leave. It's raining and you don't have shoes on. And so it was, and he's just looking at me like, you're insane. And I'm yeah. like, I am insane. I, <laughs> I, I agree with you. Like I am, I am insane. I don't, I, like I, and so then my husband is calling. So then Anyway, it was like more phone calls, passing the phone around. My husband's like, I'll give you the $90, which just made me more mad because I was right. like, that principal. <laughs> and, um, and so finally, the car, the guy from, you know, calling all the places, the guy from Carrefour asked to speak to the driver and the driver had the $90 in his pocket, like wrapped in a receipt. He just, mm -hmm. you know, he just thought he could get away with it. He had it all ready to gift you. He did. Yeah. And so I was like, I might be crazy, but you didn't get me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Not that crazy. Yeah, no, I'm like, yeah, I'm I, sure. It was just so like traumatizing because I was like, that was so difficult to just right. have, you know, this transaction. And, um, but any, so yeah, so that's been. <laughs> that's Never in my life have I heard a story where someone's shoes are stolen and locked away and held hostage. <laughs> in exchange for what they're owed so I loved it it's <laughs> such a great read again it is fish heads and duck skin by this woman Lindsay Salatka um thank you so much for letting me share it and yeah, thank you so much for sharing it yeah and if you're just watching this be sure to go ahead and listen to the episode which is also out at the same time um but I'm really glad that you got to see her beautiful face and, and hear firsthand her tell the story of how this chapter even came to life, what it was based on. So real life meets art. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you so much, Laura. I really appreciate it. Tina, honey, I get why you're frustrated, but you need to give the man his shoes. Okay, I'll give him his shoes all right, just as soon as he hands over my money. How much is it, 90 bucks? I'll give you 90 bucks. You don't have to do this. I looked at the delivery man. His eyes ticked around the room in every direction but mine. He shoved his hands in his pants pockets as he waited for his shoes to be emancipated. I turned away from him. My eyes narrowed as I growled. You don't get it, do you? I don't have to do any of this. I don't even have to be in this godforsaken place dealing with these people. But like an idiot, I chose to come to a place I don't belong to find and become someone I'm not, and now look at me. A sob escaped, just one. No, you don't, I chastened myself. I grimaced and took a deep breath as, as my clenched body could accept. This is not about the money anymore, Daniel. We could be talk about we could be talking about 90 cents, and I'd still be standing here. He hung up the phone and placed it noiselessly on the table. 
he reached into his pocket and pulled out 700 RMB, the equivalent of 90 bucks. He did not have to count it. It was folded in the exact amount owed to me with a yellow receipt wrapped around it. He handed it to me and stood there staring at me with a blank expression. I took a deep breath and another. I said nothing. I turned and reached above the door jamb for the pin to unlock the door. The unlocking process took a couple of minutes because I couldn't convince my hands to stop shaking. I fished his shoes from the tub and walked past to my front door. I pulled the door open and threw the shoes overhead as hard as I could. They bounced off the elevator door and dropped onto the worn down carpet with a thud. He leaned the dolly back and pushed the bad washer out of the apartment door. I closed and locked the door after him.